Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been awesome and today we have a real juicy video. I know it's a late upload by the way. I've been real busy today. As most of you already know, I am now head coaching a contenders team phase two. I'm going to be making a full video in depth talking about why I'm going to be coaching now, why I like this team, who the team is, just breaking down my whole entire situation with these guys. So you guys can look out for that tomorrow. Also, tomorrow is my girlfriend's birthday, so I've been real busy these past few days getting ready for it, taking her out, you know what I'm saying, treating her real good, because you know, the king's a ladies man, you know what I'm saying? I'm done blabbing on guys today. As I said, we have a juicy video. We're going to be covering a lot of news that we've missed over the past day or two. London Spitfire. Fire, Florida Mayhem, and Soul Dynasty are all hinting that they're picking up three brand new players. I don't know if it's legit for all of them because they're posting like hidden messages with emojis. So Florida Mayhem first came out and they posted that three players were going to sign with emojis and then London Spitfire and Soul Dynasty both did it. So I don't know if they're all legit. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. Don't worry guys. Then we're talking about a professional player named Knox who is now retiring. He played for Eagle Gaming and previously before that Rogue. Definitely a really popular French player, one of the best main tanks prior to the Overwatch League. And he pretty much just called out Eagle Gaming, saying they didn't pay him for the last three to five months, and that this contenders team was just absolutely awful to play under. Not because of the players, though, obviously. They won season two. They went all the way to the finals, beat every single team in European contenders when they had a org that wasn't even supporting them. Like, seriously, this org was trash from what Nox is saying. They scammed their players. It's another contender contender scam it seems like there's a lot of things going on lately in contenders that just isn't legit we're gonna take a look at that situation then at the beginning of the video we are taking a look at a clip from Muma guys how good is he is he really the best western main tank is he one of the best in the world we're gonna talk about it so if you were excited to hop into this video be sure smash that like button boys and if you're not excited for the video at least smash the like button for my girlfriend's birthday you know what I'm saying now without further ado boys let's hop into it so there's three teams right now that have supposedly hinted at picking up three new players first one to tweet this out though was the Florida mayhem let's go ahead and take a look at that tweet so as you guys can see they're using emojis we have the pen the paper obviously this means a contract then there's three you know guys with sunglasses shades a hat on pretty much hiding their identities this clearly means that they are signing three unknown players now this seems pretty legit right a cool way to say hey yeah we're going to announce some new players soon we just picked them up there's three one of them is probably going to be chris the former meta athena support player who did compete with say a player previously we'll talk more about that later but so florida mayhem posted this and then in response Ludden spitfire like an hour later they threw up the same exact tweet with the same pen the same paper the same three hidden guys so now i'm thinking all right maybe London spitfire is going to pick up three new players it is the off season it's likely i know they do have a seven man roster right now and most of their players are solidified i wouldn't see them dropping any i mean they did just win the world championship so i don't see a world where they drop any but then also London spitfire was a big roster going into season one they actually were one of the only 12 man rosters and about three stages into the season they're like eh, maybe we should drop half of a roster and just focus on a starting six and and well, it got them to the championship. So for that reason, I don't really see the London Spitfire going out and picking up a bunch of players, maybe three max, but that's it. So I kind of feel like this might not be serious from the London Spitfire and they're just maybe mocking or just poking fun at the Florida Mayhem. And I think it's a good idea for me to note that my sources have not really gotten any information about London Spitfire signing any players. Now this could mean a couple things. One being London Spitfire has kept it under wraps. They haven't gotten any information leaked or it could be the second option, which is, London Spitfire just hasn't gone out and signed anybody yet and I think it's more so the second option could be the first though but we'll just have to see and then it seems like the London Spitfire may have started a trend of teams mocking this or poking fun at it because Soul Dynasty they came out with the same exact tweet the same paper the same emojis pretty much hinting that they're picking up three players which now actually Soul Dynasty is picking up three players I can confirm three brand new players right now that they have signed one being Marvel one being 
being Michelle and one being Jesse. Well, actually, I can confirm 100% Marvel and Michelle, but for Jesse, it's not 100% yet. I know he is interested in joining them. I know they have extended an offer out to Jesse. I just don't think they've fully signed the papers yet. I do see him joining eventually, though, alongside Michelle and Marvel. But anyways, I thought I would cover this. Florida Mayhem are legitimately going to sign three new players very soon. It will be announced. The London Spitfire, I have no idea. We know they'll sign one player guaranteed because you can't start Season 2 without eight players. Currently, they have seven. As for Soul Dynasty, I can confirm basically two out of three players they're going to sign. Almost three, so they're definitely not trolling. They just joined in to have some fun. But that's really going to be it for this topic, guys. Let me know down below who you think Florida Mayhem is going to sign. Let me know if you think London Spitfire is trolling or not. And also, if you're excited for this pickups on Soul Dynasty. Anyways, let's move on now and go ahead and take a look at Nox. Now, I know some of you guys might not know who Nox is because he didn't compete in the Season 1 of Overwatch League, but I promise you, he's been around the scene forever, pretty much since day one, and he competed on some really good teams pre-Overwatch League. And real quick, just so I can put it into perspective how good Nox was and how good the team he competed on was, let's go over his accomplishments prior to the Overwatch League and after Overwatch League. So Nox's very first team was Rogue, and at the time, Rogue was one of the best teams in the entire world. This was about, I'd say, two months after the game was released. He competed at the first big major LAN event. It was the ESL Overwatch Atlantic Showdown at Gamescom. It had a $100,000 prize pool, so it was a really big deal at the time. And going into the tournament, Rogue was definitely one of the better teams in Europe, and there was potentially a chance for them to win. But the big team going into it was Envious, who had been on an absolute tear in the North American scene at the time, I believe winning something like 50 matches in a row, like they could not be stopped. And in this tournament, Envious finally lost, and well, they lost to Nox's team, Rogue. And this is where Rogue really put a name down for themselves to become one of the best teams pre-Overwatch League. After this tournament, they went on to play in many more major Overwatch lands prior to the Overwatch League. There was the Overwatch Open hosted by E-League, a $300,000 tournament. They got third through fourth in this tournament, losing 2-3 to three against Misfits, who went on to win the entire thing. After that, they went to China and competed in the APAC Premier 2016. They got first place, beating Lunatic high in the finals for $75,000. That was like a 200k tournament. Then after that, in the 2016 Overwatch World Cup, Nox competed for France. They got 5th through 8th. After that, another LAN event, IEM Season 6 Gyeonggi. They lost to LW Blue in the semifinals. After that, they came back to North America, Nox and Rogue. They completely dominated, winning multiple Overwatch Pit tournaments, Overwatch Rumbles, Overwatch Monthly Melees, Overwatch Takeovers. They won like seven North American major events, and they even beat Envious and Ye United at the time, who were the best teams in North America and Europe. And then he competed in the Overwatch World Cup 2017 with France once again. They got fourth place. And then after this is when the Overwatch League happened. He didn't get signed to a team, and he didn't even play in Contender Season 1. He didn't play in Contender Season 2 either, but he was on a roster, and it was the Eagle Gaming roster who did take down first place. And we're going to hop into Eagle Gaming real quick here, who has just been completely nasty. But Nox is going to be retiring. Everybody who knows how good Nox is, be sure to type F in the chat for him. Pay your respects. He was definitely among the first generation of best main tanks in the world. And honestly, he had an amazing career. There is not many players in the entire world who can say they were as successful in Overwatch as an esport as Nox can. The guy dominated pre-Overwatch League, so huge shout out to him. He is 30 years old, so it makes sense for him to retire. Maybe he'll move on to a coach. Not too sure, but it will be the end of his career. And now let's move on to Eagle Gaming. So there had recently been some reports coming out from Real Leak Boy and some other random leakers saying that Eagle Gaming had not been paying their players and the organization is going down in flames. I was just about to cover it, but I wanted to wait for a little bit more of information, maybe somebody involved in the situation, and well, we got that. With Nox retiring, he opened up about Eagles Gaming in an interview done with Amelia Mary Justice on Invin Global. In the article, we could find this. According to Nox, he first signed a short-term contract with Eagle Gaming in mid-November of 2017, so about a year ago. 
It was stipulated that as soon as he returned to France, he had to sign his employment contract to ratify his commitment. And he also added and said he never received his employment contract despite frequent requests. Then Knox says he later learned that Eagle Gaming had never been approved to offer pro esports contracts and by December, the players saw the first of many payment delays. Eagle's gaming management became increasingly hostile when asked for salary fulfillment. Then in July 2018, the players were notified that the organization had encountered financial difficulties because some investors were no longer holding their commitments or even had retracted. By August, Knox says he was informed that the organization would be liquidated in the near future due to its insurmountable financial challenges. And then of course, the following month, the roster went on to win European Overwatch Contender Season 2 in front of their home crowd, and following their victory, Eagle Gaming announced that it would be releasing the players from the buyout clause of their contracts. Then Knox goes on to say that the team has not been paid for three or four months, and they never touched any of the money that they won from the tournaments. So the money that they won in the most recent Overwatch Contender Season 2, they have not gotten. So these players, just like some others in the Overwatch Contender scene, have been robbed. And I'm just sitting here wondering, when is Blizzard going to clean this up? There's so many Tier 2 players who are starving, grinding super hard to make it into the Overwatch League, they're not getting paid a dime. Some of them are holding off school, some of them are holding off work, and they're just going all in and they might not even have a backup plan. Like, these players need to be protected. I understand it may not be the best decision to hold off on school or work, but still, Blizzard needs to support the Tier 2 scene more than they already are. One or two LAN events a year with $50,000 prize pools is not enough. And then when they have rogue organizations offering fake contracts and scamming players, it's just ridiculous. This cannot happen because then the players are going to commit, they are going to quit their jobs, they're going to quit their schools because they think these organizations are going to take care of them. Them, then they don't get taken care of and they have nothing to fall back on so it's a major issue right now blizzard needs to step in they need to clean this up but that's going to be it for Eagle Gaming and Knox, guys. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at a couple of clips. This first one is from Muma, and Jesus, he is so good. Sometimes I forget how great Muma is. He's literally the best Western main tank, in my opinion. Watch the clip. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm literally just the best player in the fucking world, dude. Oh god, it's surreal, man. Alright, back to fucking Hammond. This shit's too Resident Sleeper. What the hell? Is he human? Yeah, back to Hammond. This shit's too easy. Okay guys, let's be straight up right now. Muma's insane. I haven't seen a clip that clean in so long. The perfect jumps, the timing, the way he booped that Anna and Zenyatta at the end was incredible. Huge shout out to Muma. I personally, again, do think he is the best main tank in the West. Maybe going in season two, he'll have more competition, but like in general, I think he's just a top five main tank in the world, and he's a big reason why I think USA has a good chance at winning World Cup 2018. Let me know down below, guys, how good do you think Muma is? Do you think Team USA has a chance, but that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure drop that like, subscribe to my channel for daily Overwatch League content, and super easy, click that red button, turn post notifications on, never miss a video, and now that's going to be it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.